Mimi, did you know that Argentine went bankrupt nine times? Argentine is a country that has gone bankrupt nine times, which is why they might be saving. Viva la Bitcoin revolution. Argentine is a country in which hyperinflation has become an expectation, but a country where Bitcoin has the potential for real savings. Now let's look at Warren Buffett for a second. You see, he is truly an investing legend. However, he's never been a fan of Bitcoin, and he recently commented, if you offered me all the Bitcoin in the world for $25 per Bitcoin, I would not take it. Now, I've always admired Buffett, but of course, it only goes to show he does not get it. You see, the US dollar, from his point of view, is the strongest currency in the world. He can, however, not grasp the possibility that the state might hyperinflate the currency, default on debt, or simply confiscate assets. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about Argentina, or a lot about the Argentina, Piso, and the history, but also what may actually come. You know, remember when we saw the United States abolish the gold standard, right? I think we are going to abolish the US dollar currency as we know it, and there will be implemented a new currency on the blockchain, perhaps even the USDC. But let's get into Argentine. Because for the people of Argentina, financial collapses are basically the Groundhog Dog. You remember the, the, the movie with Bill Murray? Well, it's Groundhog Day. Again? Now, gratefully, Bitcoin offers a trustworthy alternative to their failing national currency and also a corrupt monetary system. So let's go and have a more in-depth view of this. Currently, Argentina is facing one of the highest inflation rates in the world. And let's say yet again. The nation has no access to international capital and owes over $40 billion to the IMF, which basically means the IMF always the so owns the sorry ass of Argentina. Now, prices they are soaring and nearly half of the population are living in poverty. Economic conditions are as bad as they've ever been. And that is saying a lot for a country like Argentina. Successive governments, beginning with the Peronists in the 1940s, have saddled the nation with unwidely debt. Argentine has gone bankrupt, as I mentioned in the beginning, nine times, with more than a dozen cycles of hyperinflation and reform over the past century. No country has a worse track record than Argentine. And the playbooks always looks the same. It looks like this. First, print money to deliver social services in order to retain power. Then you act shocked when inflation skyrockets. Then you act even more shocked when political unrest ensures. And then all you do is institute monetary reform. You see, Argentinian inflation is a special kind of inflation. It comes with a lot of zeros. And we are talking about millions of zeros. However, what good is a salary of $1 million of pesos when bread costs $2 million? So facing political pressure, politicians, they embrace monetary reform, which includes a mix of raising policy rates, controlling currency exchange rates, or simply just introducing a new currency. Now let's for a moment pretend that 19, it's 1970, and you and I, we have one million pesos in the back pocket. Forget the back pocket. We have it in the bank. Feeling good about life? I guess you do. But here comes the Argentine monetary reform. You see, the old peso, the peso lay, replaces the previous peso at a rate of 1 to 100. Now you only have 10,000 pesos. Remember, we just had a one million pesos in the bank. Now we only have 10,000 pesos in the bank. It's important. Because then, 13 years later, in 1983, the peso Argentino replaces the peso lei at 1 to 10,000. Shit, man, now we only have one peso. Remember, 13 years ago, we started with a million. Now we got one peso. It gets worse than that. Just two, lay, two years later, one peso equals 1K. That means you now have 0 0.001 peso. 10 years later, we're now in 1993. 1 to 10,000, which equals you have started off with a million. Now you got, and listen to this, 0 
Zero, 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 one piso. I might have forgotten a zero, maybe added a one. I think you get the drift. So economist Marcos Buscalia, I hope I pronounce his name right, recently described the piso as ice cream. If you keep a piso long enough, it melts in terms of how much you can buy with it. But let me warn you, Argentine is only going to be an example of what you and I are going to experience in our lifetime. Reason being, because on paper, Argentine's political system is akin to the United States. Now, three branches and popularly elected presidents with four-year terms. Now, in practice, checks and balances have been on the decline for decades, known as hyper-presidentialism. I like that word. Argentine's presidents wield, or wield far too much power, and Argentine has been poorly governed by both liberals and conservatives. The seeds of Argentine's current economic crisis were sown over the last decade. It begins with former president Cristina Kirchner. She is now vice president, pursuing a populist socialist agenda for her working class base. Now she spent massively on subsidizing and social programs, all financed by foreign borrowing. What else? Public debt soared, and then inflation, inflation and interest rates have been skyrocketing ever since. Thereafter, center-right president Mauricio Macri, he took office and promised, as every president prior to him, to revive the economy. However, the peso continued to fall against the US dollar. And even though we saw capital controls imposed, what did the Argentines do? Well, they started hoarding black market US dollar right under their mattress, or perhaps in the right pocket, in the left pocket, and a few in the back pocket. Now, once the people start hoarding the dollars in their pockets, at this point, the government should really have stopped spending, and they should have regained a look at the deficit. But as we know, austerity dims one's re-election prospects. So, in 2018, President Marcy, he secured Listen to this, a 57 billion US dollar credit line from none other than the IMF. This was the largest in the history of IMF. But as always, dealing with the IMF, the billions that came with a caveat. Macri had to implement anti-inflation policies. So he looked for shortcuts. He sold tons of high interest short-term bills called Lelic notes to sponge liquidity. But that wasn't enough. Poverty rose and citizens grew restive. The Macri's popularity rating obviously plummeted. Just as the 2019 presidential election rose, his populist rivals Alberto Fernandez and former president Christina Kirchner were swept into office. We know what happened next, right? The pandemic. Russia's war in Ukraine, shrinking food supplies, and tighter energy markets have been battering economies all over the world. But few countries were less prepared than Argentine. So soon after the shutdown, the nation defaulted on sovereign debt and inflation hit 70%. And this is not the first currency collapse for Argentine. Citizens began obviously to accumulate durable goods like homes, gold, technological devices, and non-perishable food. They all have one goal. Get out of the piso. You know, get, get, get away from me. Get it away. So spend those pesos because we know today one piso is worth one dollar. Tomorrow one piso may only be worth 0 0.000001 dollar, right? So on payday, the Argentinians, they rushed to, still do, to illegal, I hope I say it right, cuvas which are black market exchanges in order to trade pesos for other currencies. So these exchanges primarily distribute cash, and this is a dangerous undertaking. Criminals, obviously, they know the game, and mockings are a commonplace. So even so, the black market offers a safer bet than the national currency and banking system. Now think about that for a second. Could it be true that the black market is offering a safer place to exchange your money than the banks? And yes, it is. 
You see, in 2001, the Argentinian government enacted the El Coranito, denying people access to their bank accounts for almost a year. When the banks, they reopened, citizens discovered that all US dollars had been exchanged for pesos and the peso lost 60% of its value. Now, the question is, could this happen again? But your question should be, could this happen in the European Union? Could this happen in the United States of America? And you bet your ass it could. Anyway, let's get back to Argentine. So no wonder Argentinian Red Silicon Valley's Bitcoin patient zero, Venice Carreras, who helped convert, help convert Elon Musk, Peter Thiel, Reid Hoffman, and Kathmate Pelipativa to the cause. Carreras, he grew up in the Patagonia region and watched his family lose all their life savings three times due to the currency collapses. So he also founded SAPO, the first Bitcoin institutional custodian where he sold, which he sold to Coinbase in 2019. So the Argentinians, they are increasingly using Bitcoin as an alternative to their shitcoin national currency. So as a peer-to-peer decentralized network, Bitcoin is enabling Argentinians to freely send and receive value to each other across, and that even across borders. Now, importantly, Bitcoin is both debasement resistant and secure and seizure resistant. Bitcoin can be securely stored on a USB stick, as we know, or if you can remember your 12 letter code in your head. Either way, it is much easier and safer than hodling cash from a black market under your mattress or in the back pocket for that matter. Now let's get back to reality. So government officials, journalists, and even Homemade liberals like Warren Buffett and Elizabeth Warren are cluelessly deride Bitcoin as dangerous and risky. Let's not get something wrong here. They traffic in Western luxury or in US luxury, believing with little regard for the needs for the little people, for the billions of people who live in countries with unstable financial systems. So let's be clear. We all know that the future of finance is not perfect yet. Neither is Bitcoin. But even as Bitcoin's price has fallen in the recent months, Bitcoin remains a superior alternative to the Argentinian peso and many other countries' currency as well. But let's look at Argentine again. In fact, according to a New York Times article, nearly 60% of Argentinians believe that Bitcoin, one of the most popular cryptocurrencies, would retain the value of the savings over that same period. So adoption of Bitcoin in Argentina is outpacing Europe, the United States and Japan. Now, the same New York Times article states about one third of Argentinians said they bought or sold cryptocurrencies at least once a month one third right that's a lot of people in argentine however double the percentage of people in the united states according to a separate survey by morning consult so we are seeing in argentine we are seeing the double amount of people acting with cryptocurrencies in argentine compared to united states so the nature the nation the argentine nation is a top country for receiving paychecks in cryptos and the black market exchanges now offer exchange rates between the peso and Bitcoin. Now, perhaps, or of course, I don't know, but will Bitcoin cure Argentine's economic woes and political failure? I don't know. But one thing is for sure, Bitcoin is a super valuable asset for the people because the only money that Argentine politicians cannot destroy is money on the blockchain. In case this video gave you any kind of value, then do me a favor. Give me and I a hit, a like, a subscribe, and all them goodies. My name is Nico Harachi, and I am number one.